Welcome back to Rousher Racing Weekly Race Fans, um, where Brent just participated in points race number five at the Red Bluff Outlaws. Um, Kim and I didn't go to the racetrack this week. We stayed home and from the comfort of our warm home, and we watched the races. We didn't get to deal with the chaining up process that Brent Rousher Motorsports got to deal with. I think that's their their first experience with having the chain to get to this track. So that right there is part of the reason why we don't go to as many races is because it's just a pain in the butt. But um, how do you feel as his weekend went after, or the, even the trip there? Well, the the trip there was definitely different. I'm, I've never had to put chains on anything. Normally, if it's chains required, I, I stay home. <laughs> <laughs> but we figured it out. We only had to chain up for about 30 miles, so it wasn't super bad. We left Friday night, so we got to sleep in a little bit on Saturday. We didn't have to be up at 4 a.m. to get over there. Right. But I think Brent's weekend went pretty good for having the track conditions change so much. I mean, normally we deal with it going super slick at Cycle Land through the heat, but this, it, the dirt's so different and just trying to figure it out, make the car work, right. make, make it so it's drivable for him. And just, he rolled out for qualifying. He looked nice and smooth. He wasn't fighting the car. It was really nice to see. Mm -hmm. it, it's hard to watch him go faster and then see where he ends up. It's like, really? How do you go faster and go backwards? Yeah. It's, it's kind of frustrating. It puzzles me and Evan with... Even with his motor, we, we turn great RPM in the main and in the heat race, but we can't turn any RPM for the for qualifying. Right. So, like Brent said, we pushed a head gasket through the part way through the main. So we got Old Faithful on there. So that motor's always done us good. So we'll go put it, push it to the limit next weekend. So, but other than that, all all in all, points race five was okay. Got caught up in some crashes. Had to bend the little steering link that's at the end of the steering shaft back mm. so it bent that pretty good again i think that's the fourth or fifth time i've had to bend it back so yeah. i think we'll order a new one this weekend so but we'll go on from there and yeah, yeah it, it red bluffs hard you you go there beginning of the of the season where there's no weather in the area and the track is dry it's hard to get a hold of it's what we're used to racing really at yeah. fernley and fallon where there's yeah. not a lot of moisture in the dirt um, but then you get this, this weather, it moves in and puts some humidity in the air and you end up with some hero dirt that will bog your engine down. Yep. And so everything you've learned the past four races is now no good to you. Yeah, it's out the window. You know, so. it, it kind of it sucks. You just got to keep a notebook for where to start next season when you go back because it'll be the same next year. Yeah, we we so. were chasing gearing and then, you know, the weather changes. It's like, do we change the jet? Do we not change the jet? Right. Do we... Lean is mean, so let her eat, and we'll see what happens. Right, right. And, and as we've discussed, it's at Red Bluff, you pit outside, so you're outside in the rain, in the weather, and you could have an air density gauge and read it out there and be like, cool, at this number, this is where I'd set my carburetor. But then you go run indoors. So you go in the building, and the air is completely different. It can be 5 to 10 degrees warmer, cooler. The humidity, the moisture in the yep. air that the engine's going to burn is way different. So yep. there's a, there's a big guessing game in trying to figure things out. And so. it and it actually the air density it's really weird because there was a guy that walked the track during uh, they were they had an intermission break and it was almost ten ten points different from corner to corner right. from s totally separate ends in the building. So it's Right, that, that's what it, you get with having that big garage door open on one end and the other end completely sealed off. Yep. Yeah, so it makes amazing. it hard. So. Right. But we'll take a look at his race video and have Brent and Evan in after that. So Perfect. Let's check it out.
upside down on his birthday.
Welcome back race fans to Rousher Racing Weekly. Uh, you guys just seen that video of Brent this past weekend at the Red Bluff Outlaws Point race number five. Um, this weekend the track was kind of different mostly because it was rained there the night before on Friday night and so when it rains the cars tend to bring in quite a bit more of moisture back onto the track from outside with all the puddles and everything. So this week in qualifying, the, we put the exact same setup that we had last weekend. Car looked super good. Brent went two tenths faster than he did last weekend. I, I think that's part of this. The driver did a lot better this week, and the track was also pretty fast. Then in the heat race, he started in seventh and didn't seem to have the drive like we had last week for some reason. And uh, he started seventh and finished seventh as well. But luckily every car made it to the A main this week and no one had to run a B. <laughs> and in the A main he started 15th and he kind of went up spots, fell back some, went up some, fell back some. He did that the whole race, got caught up in a few crashes, just didn't have anywhere to go. He'll talk some about, about that later. But uh, he also had a couple of car problems that he also talked about that was kind of a factor where he didn't also have like any drive in the main. But besides that, I think this weekend went pretty well, and I'll pass it on to him and talk. So, I rolled off for qualifying session number three, and when I went out, the track was gripped up, like more grippy than last week, and it drove the same. It didn't feel like it had any more, I'd say, like drive. Like it felt exactly the same. And even though it was two tenths quicker, I'm getting faster, but I also fell back. I was 13th fastest last week. And this week I was 14th fastest. Um, when I went out for my heat race, I started seventh. We, we were looking on, we looked at the board and it said top five, which according to us, that normally means top five transfer. And when I finished seventh, I knew I was either going to run a B main or I was going to run another B main. But apparently didn't read it all the way, and it was top five invert. So if you won the first heat race, you were going to start fifth. If you won the second heat race, you were going to start tenth. So if we would have actually read it, we would have understood it. Um, so then after the heat race was over, we rolled out for the main, and then... We were losing a head gasket in the motor, got caught up in a crash that was like unavoidable. A car started to flip in front of me, and then when he started to flip, uh, the whole field just stacked up in front of me and I had nowhere to go. And then about a restart or two restarts later, I got caught up in another crash where one kid just spun out in front of the entire field, stacked us all up. And then when we got the restart again, the car just didn't launch off the restart, probably mostly because I was on the bottom for the restart. In the bottom, you don't want to be on the bottom at Red Bluff for restarts. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, I pulled off the racetrack and then my leg was just drenched in coolant. I yelled at my dad telling him that my leg was wet in coolant and then come to find out we're pushing another head gasket out the motor. So. The night overall was okay. It could have gone a lot better, but first season at Red Bluff, it's a learning curve. And next will be Mom's Corner after a word from our sponsors. Welcome back to Mom's Corner. I'm Kim Rauscher. I'm Samantha Rauscher. So this past weekend, uh, David and myself, we did not actually go down to Red Bluff to watch racing. We watched on Fast 4 Media. Uh, we are always given a shout out to Fast 4 Media, but we get to watch live as the races are going on. So we can kind of see how Brent's doing and give our tidbits. Uh, Uncle David's always uh, on the phone saying, this is what I think. 
<laughs> and so uh, we give uh, our son Evan a call as he's uh, down there car chiefing. So um, yeah, it was a lot of fun to watch Brent this week. I think I think he did good. I think he's uh, improving every time he gets on the track, and he's learning for sure. Yeah, so um, I call it kind of a watch party. Um, grandma comes over, the, another uncle, whoever's not traveling with us kind of gathers around the TV and watches it. Um, we hope, obviously, that you can see the new Fast Four widescreen, you can see the whole track. The bigger screen, they kind of focus mm -hmm. on where the action is. It just kind of depends, but they do tend to catch most of the wrecks, um, obviously the leaders and any of the action. So it is kind of neat to have those those pieces. Um, and the family here is right on the phone saying you did good. This is, you know, drive it a little harder here, um, which is super helpful because they just, we all see something different. So that's nice to, to have and to see. Um, for me, this first weekend, as the boys kind of talked about, was um, we drove over in the snow the day before. So chaining up was kind of an experience, I guess. Um, I like 65, 70 and clear roads, so 10 miles an hour is <laughs> not really uh, we all. <laughs> 10 miles an hour and just kind of creeping through. Um, not my cup of tea, really. You can, I guess I was just waiting for a deer to come shooting right out and it to all be over, but it was fine. <laughs> well, at least at 10 miles an hour, you can just kind of ease off and, and slow down and you're not doing 65, 70 miles an hour. Yeah. Deer, <laughs> deer yeah. runs out there across the road. True. Uh, we've, we've chained in the, we've chained uh, going over the, the hill a couple of times and uh, we actually tried to beat the, the weather the first time we chained, uh, opening the chains out there in the dark, trying to put them on. Yeah. Don't know what we're doing. David has slung chains before, but we had gotten the cables for our trailer, and uh, I don't like those. Those yeah. nobody knew how to do it. There was like four of us standing there trying to read the directions, dumping snow. Yeah, so we've been there, done that. So. Yeah. so from here throughout the rest of winter, we'll kind of just watch the weather and see what is best. You know, travel first thing Saturday morning or to go up Friday night. Um, we have found a hotel that we kind of like there and it's close to the track and easy to get into and so of course it's just about restrictions and and what the weather holds for us we are very fortunate we are speaking of restrictions still able to race at this point so that makes it really nice that we were able to go over there um, while a lot of the country is locked down we're still able to enjoy what we what we love mm -hmm. we're very lucky in that sense we are so um, yes, you do have to wear a mask in the pavilion. The boys are pretty good about wearing theirs, um, taking it with them. Uh, anytime you're indoors, you have to have it on. So they just put one of the drapey ones on. They have it on all day. It's just easy and we move on with the day. Yes, definitely. So we also wanna always give a shout out to one of our best sponsors. Uh, we have Pizza Factory in Red Rock and also on Lakeside Drive. Mm -hmm. uh, we always suggest that you go and get pizza and at least they're close out here to the Cold Springs community and they do deliver out here. And yes. with the holidays coming, nobody wants to cook every weekend. So definitely hit up Pizza Factory in Red Rock. Yeah. Um, something to note, today is Brent's birthday, so he'll be 11 today. We're celebrating that, and we'll go into this new weekend with a new driver, we hope, ready to go. Yes. Yeah. 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 So. Happy birthday, Brent. Thank you. <laughs> Stay tuned um, every Wednesday at 10 a.m. on CSTV for Rauscher Racing Weekly.